Well, uh, apparently I need a lesson because that's gone poorly for I me. I'll give you a lesson. Okay, show me how you're setting the face. Shut, and I'm trying to swing no, out. In the see, first one, it, it wasn't okay. shut enough. How many, how many degrees shut is that in your mind? 15. That's like two. Shut up. I swear, what do you, where's square to you then? That is square. That is aimed right of the center of the line. That is square. Okay, it's pretty close. Where's shut? Okay, you're in the way of the camera, man. People can't see. Where's shut? Okay, that was more than you were before. Okay, fine. I was Ready? like... Ready? Let me try this. There it, you go. It's gonna hit the tree. <laughs> yeah, you gotta path it further right. You're a right. terrible coach. Path. Okay, give, do me a favor. Shut it more. Path it further right. Your setup's too neutral. Okay. So this is for you slicers at home, right? So you're still slicing it. Exaggerate it, right? Don't be scared. All right. So face. I'm shut. Talking, yeah. Shut it. Regrip it like that. Shut it. Get that path. 10 and now I'm gonna set up right. closed. Yep. So I can swing out. Yes. Stupid hook. Even challenge. more, even more. Face. Face. There you go. <laughs> I hit the tree again. <laughs> I know. You gotta get your path further out. I'm trying, man. I'm starting to sweat. Alright, let's see one more. Cause you cause once you shut your stance like that, you're opening the face a little bit. So make All sure right. you really, really hook. Alright, so let me set my body first. Okay. Here, so I'm like wicked shut. Yeah. For those of you who can't see, like normally I'd be here square. I'm like. Yeah. So he's, he's a lot of people target. think of uh, closing their stance as well by, by putting their shoulders a little shut. You got to make sure yeah. your whole body, everything, shoulders, everything hips, has feet, to go together. Yeah. Because you, you see some people and especially slicers, right? They're, they're short. They'll think, oh, okay, I'm going to square my body, but then they're, they're, shoulders are way open so oh, everything's sure. kind of everything gets discombobulated up. yeah you need everything needs to match right everything needs to be if you're going to close it close everything okay Let's except see. the guy who hasn't hit a good shot yet <laughs> okay you know what you should be doing you well i'm tr i'm really trying i've worked so hard on fading it okay right. okay good now release that right hand hit down better closer i you missed thin, it, but, it well now at least hook. it hooked there you go all right, tell the people, this is all ridiculous. Right, yeah. Why don't you show them? I don't all know right, what right. how I'm doing. Okay, so, I mean, Matt has the general concept, right? So I think what happens, though, in our little bubble, in our box here of, of that setup is perception versus reality, right? So in my mind, Matt did not have that face closed enough, right? So, like, I was setting up and having it, like, the toe is pointed at the screen, basically, right? So, I mean, I think in this situation, we know the objective is to get it to hook. Overhooking it is fine, right? And especially if you're at home right now and you're slicing it, you're not going to set up every shot like this, right? But it's a great practice tool to kind of get your mind understanding where to path it, right? So most people that slice it, there's two reasons, right? So th the first reason is you come over the top, right? So you come over the top, you have to have the face open. If you don't have the face open, you're gonna hit a pull hook. Or the other reason is your face is too open and in, in an effort to kind of square the face, you come over the top, right? So now if I swing this way, I've kind of squared the face, but my hands are kind of in a bad position. I'm gonna catch a lot of thin uh, shots, a lot of chunky shots. So the goal here is to make sure that our face is closed enough on the way down, right? Because if my face is too closed, what's gonna happen is my brain's gonna start to tell me I've gotta swing it out here to get the thing to come back to target, right? If my face is wide open, my brain's gonna go, what are you thinking? You can't swing out to the right, you have to swing left to get this generally towards our target. But in this situation, there's a big tree in front of us, which we know that it's, you can definitely hit it. It's a really so, big tree. It's a big tree. So again, same sort of thing is I can almost guarantee you if you're really slicing it, moving it left to right, your face is too open and your stance ends up being too open. So what you have to do at the range is you have to you go completely opposite from that, right? You have to set up a little closed. The first 10, 15 balls you hit are gonna go right and that's okay, right? You have to trust the process here sort of thing. So again, you're gonna, you're gonna have that face a little closed you wanna make sure on the way back that you don't open the face too much, right? Because if I open this face, all those good things I did at setup are now gone, right? So I'm gonna keep that face shut, I'm gonna take it back shut, and then I'm gonna release it hard, right? So let's see if I can pull off another one here. That's pretty good, huh? Not bad, it started too far right. So again, right, so that drew not quite enough, but I'll take that, right? And, and I think 
So that was, that was one where path, face to path ratio was 11 degrees closed. That's dramatic, right? That's a lot. Um, that's something that you're probably not gonna end up wanting to do or get to, but it's a good practice tool, like I said. So if you set up at the range and you aim everything right and your intended target is left of your setup here, well, try and hit a few, even just smooth ones, right? So if I take this out, I can really feel my hands kind of turning over. We can see that it's hooking, right? So again, go to the range. Don't be scared to hit some bad ones, right? I think everybody, <laughs> Everybody is, is afraid of being that guy at the range that shanks one and kind of runs it down the range like tin cup, but you have to hit some bad ones, right? You have to practice that and you have to make sure that all of the things you're doing are, they're for a good reason, right? They're uh, exaggeration allows you to, so that you can go on the golf course and not have to think about this much and kind of neutralize that ball flight, right? So um, taking that from the crazy place that we were, if I was just to hit a normal draw here, I would neutralize my stance a little bit, right? I'm still gonna have the face pretty square. I'm not gonna have it quite hooded, but I'm gonna set my shoulders probably a little bit right, a little bit closed, and then kind of same concept applies. I'm gonna make sure I don't open up the face too much. I'm gonna keep it fairly down. I'm not gonna exaggerate the heck out of it, but somewhere kind of in between there. And then I'm gonna kind of release it, probably hit that really straight compared to the ones that we've just looked at. You can see it's falling left a little bit. It's in the middle of the woods, but that's not the shot I'd be hitting in this position, right? So there's one, so face was three degrees close, right? So eight path instead of 15, and honestly, probably a much more manageable shot in real, real situations. Okay, so Mark, for, for, our, uh, for everybody watching here, um, yep. everybody trying to understand the tech behind it, and, or the science behind it, rather, help understand how path creates a curve on the ball. For sure. So I, I would say, like, I'll, I'm gonna just start and say, a lot of people are really focused on their face mm -hmm. to try and get the ball starting left or starting right. Yep. But the path is creating curve. The, the ball curves away from the path. Exactly, yeah. Yes. So, so think if you think about that, and I'll just kind of lead you into it, if you, the ball curves away from the path. If you swing left, it's gonna make the ball curve right. If you swing right, it's gonna make the ball curve left. Yeah. So when you match up the face with it, this yeah. is this is what we're trying to do. Exactly, exactly. So, and, and Matt's correct. So that's where, remember when he was doing it too, I said your path isn't far enough right, right? So the start direction is not far enough right. So that's for, for, for you at home, the path sends the golf ball. So the path is the direction my club is moving through impact. Um, it's not an overall measurement, it's just through impact, right? So my path there was eight degrees. To get that to draw, my face has to be a percentage closed to my path, right? So it doesn't have to be close to my target. So in this instance, I could have my face angle at five degrees and my face to path ratio would be three and a half degrees closed, which would be a tight little draw, right? So, so, so that's something to clarify. Sometimes people will talk about club path. Yeah. And there's a big difference between club path and it, whether it's in real or, or face sorry, to path. whether it's face to path mm -hmm. or face to target, yes, they're two very very different numbers, and yeah. you've got to make sure you understand yeah. that. Yeah, and in, and in a situation like this, I'm actually almost trying to get my face shut to the target because it it's sense. such an exaggeration. Right. But in real life, if you were to draw two lines here, right? So my path would be out to the right four or five degrees, then my face would be just a little line in between that and then I'd hit a tight little draw, yeah. right? So the reason you slice it is because your path is too far left and then your face is open from that position. So I see it every single day in fittings, right? So someone's path will be seven degrees left and then their face will be two degrees open to their target. So their face to path ratio is nine degrees, right? And I hear it all the time. They go, yeah, my irons don't curve that much, but I slice my driver. Well, irons don't curve as much as drivers. So if you have the same face to pass face to path relationship with your irons or your wedges versus your driver and three wood, you're going to move the driver and three wood a hell of a lot more, right? So you have to be conscious of that and you have to understand that you're going to end up moving those a little bit more. So you have to make sure that you neutralize things a little bit. And the first step is getting your path in order and then trying to learn how to, 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 to make sure that face kind of correlates as well, right? So yeah. And that's what Scott was talking about when, when Scott Couch was here giving us a lesson, Yeah, he was explaining that the, the path, is a lot more difficult to change. The face can change very easily yes. and it's also the hardest thing to maintain. Exactly. So, yeah. so if you can get your path under control, which yeah. is kind of like the golf swing, 
Yeah. Um, your face, you can make small tweaks and, and yeah, and you and, and you will better. exactly right. So uh, Matt's absolutely right. And and to to talk a little bit more about what Scott said too, right is. Your face angle, that's how every good player is going to miss it, right? So they're going to path it within a couple of degrees or less than that typically, but their face is going to be off a little bit. That's yep. why nobody hits perfect shots because we're talking half a degree to two degrees, right? It's, yeah, it's the best players in the shot. world still miss, but generally it's a face miss. Yeah, it's they're, not going to be a pass. Their golf swing, so their path, their swing direction, those yeah. things don't change a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and oddly enough, most... Weekend golfers, amateurs, even good amateurs, I mean, they all have very similar golf swings in the mm. sense that there's a consistency. So their swing direction and their club yeah. path are often very consistent. Yeah. Um, they, off, they often just fight with, with, with club face, face control. Right? Yeah. And, and you see the rare person that will path it a couple of degrees left and a couple of degrees right. That's so, normally the guy or the person that goes to the range or you ask them what shot shape they hit and they go, I don't know. Yeah. Right? Because it changes every single day, right? Sometimes it's a tiny little draw, sometimes mm -hmm. a little fade, but the majority of people, it's either four or five degrees right, or it's two to eight, 10 plus degrees left. Right. right? But, but generally they have, you know, they have a wider range. It might be six degrees or yeah, something, whereas tour pros have, you know, a, a maybe one degree, half yeah. degree range. Yeah. But, but there is a, there is a tendency, which is why we're able to fit the average, average player golfer. because Absolutely. they do have a tendency so they you do. can fit around that. Absolutely. Right. And I think, and I think those, those minor swing faults and stuff like that, that only cause that, that weekend golfer to only hit a fade and never see a, a, a draw. It's not a terrible thing, right? Because consistency is what we look for in golf. And I think if you can get fit for that swing, you can get fit for that shot shape and, and you and your fitter could talk about neutralizing that then you can keep swinging the way you want to swing. And, hopefully that, that lends itself and, and you make better contact doing that. And then you get better numbers with, with whatever driver or whatever yeah. product you're Manage your golf your, game. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So give us one more here. All right. Give us one, one more. more. All right. So let's see. So again, so walk us through it. So you're going to swing to the right. Your path. My path is going to be way out here. Is going to be out to the right. Yeah. You're going to yeah. shut the face. Your yeah. face is going to be left. Absolutely. And you're not going to hit it like an idiot like me. And you're actually going to pull off the shot. Well, let's, let's see if I can't do it. That was solid. I might yeah. be a little long. Came out pretty hot. Pretty good. Or it might go in. Spin. Yikes. Good shot. So again, that's not a shot that you're going to hit unless you have to beat Matt in a challenge or he's two shots up and there's three holes left and you're going to kind of go for it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there's a good example, right? So 13 and a half club path aggressive, right? That's a lot. Yeah. That uh, generally, I mean, in a, in a perfect world, it's inside four degrees. Yeah. And ideally your, your, your face angles, half your path, right? So if you're, eight degrees path, your face is four, right? So that would give mm -hmm. you a good, nice, tight push draw. Right? But so, for all your, all you slicers out there, practice it's this. almost always the case that your path is left. Yeah. yeah. So you really need to feel like you're, like we always talk about in baseball terms, you feel like you're hitting it over the first baseman's first base, head. For sure. Most slicers swing to third base. Yeah. Yeah. And so. you need to get used to kind of rolling that face over a little yeah. bit, right? You don't want to, obviously you don't want that to be your golf swing. You don't want to flip it like crazy, but you definitely need to make sure that your face angles primed enough mm -hmm. to be able to hit this, right? Cause if it's wide open and I come in and I hit this, well, I'm going to shank it, right? Yeah. Or it's going to go hundred yards. Right. So I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but I did that during the challenge. <laughs> you did that during the challenge. Exactly. So, all right. Um, all right. Well, thanks guys. Perfect. <laughs> nice club twirl. All right.